So again, good, af good afternoon and welcome to our afternoon session for our horticulture, our crop side two. So for this um, session, we're going to have um, in continuation of our topic on uh, photosynthesis, which is about Calvin cycle. So last time we uh, we stopped from here. And um, if you also remember, we watched a video presentation through YouTube on the step-by-step -step, um, um, reactions of the, uh, of the photosynthesis. So ito na yung um, the third um, this reaction, the Calvin cycle, wherein this is a light-independent reaction. It means that um, it doesn't require light for it to occur. So it's called carbon fixation. And this, this um, the carbon cycle normally um, is very common to the C3 plants since uh, they fix three carbons, no? That's why they are called C3 plants. And um, this comprise 80% of all the plants on earth. So most of the plants on earth, therefore, especially yung ating mga crops, is or are C C3 plants. And this uh, process occurs in the stroma. And this uses the uh, ATP and NADPH from light reaction as energy and uses carbon dioxide to produce glucose. It also takes six turns and uses 18 ATP and 12 and ADPH in this case. So you have seen last time on the animation how the carbon cycle occur inside the chloroplast. So this is the stroma where uh, the carbon cycle occurs you know, inside the chloroplast. So usually this is what uh, happens in the carbon cycle C3 fixation. So as you can see here, it's actually a cycle, no? When it uses different um uh, ATPs along the way, you know, from uh, to produce glucose in this side here and uh, in this as end product. So this carbon cycle. So next we have um, therefore uh, the Calvin cycle, which is uh, C three, will uh, have produced glucose as as its end product. So um, during uh, no, during hot, dry, bright days, um, there, there is what we call a photorespiration occur occurring. No? And this at this point, stomates will close because um, because of a very with the very hot environment, the tendency will be the evaporation of um, evaporation of the the different, I know, no? the different, the different, what do you call that? Different um, water. So let me just take a, um, for a while, a. Good morning. Good evening, ma'am. Good afternoon, everyone. Ascension ng ma... It's alright. Oh, busy pa kami yung dagaw. Kaya hindi na alam. Magulo ka ayo. I-op ko muna ang cam ko, ma'am. Ah, ano na lang siya. What they call that? Okay, so um, in continuation to um to the discussion, when we say photorespiration, when we say photorespiration, it's actually um during this point where the stomata closes, it's actually fixed oxygen instead of carbon dioxide since uh, we know that stomata opens for the exchange of gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide and also along with that is the loss of water no? so since um they want to uh, know 
to prevent the loss of water because of the hot, dry environment, the tendency of these plants, they will close their stomata. And at this point, they cannot, they cannot exchange or take in carbon dioxide, but only oxygen. So during this time, they produce, they're going to produce two carbon molecules instead of the three carbon sugar molecules, which is the the I know the usual na Calvin cycle. So therefore, this will produce no sugar molecules or no ATP. No, at this point. But because of water respiration, plants have special adaptation as well. Para malimit the limit nila yung effect of water respiration. So some plants do not survive while others they, we call them C4 plants and the calm plants. So what are these plants? When we say C4 plants, these are plants which thrives in the hot, moist environments. And this uh, constitute 15% of plants, no? Like the grasses, the corn, and the sugar cane. So these plants are able to um, adapt no? from, from very hot and moist environments. And where in their photosynthesis occurs in two uh, very unique places. First, the light reaction occurs in their mesophyll cells, while the Calvin cycle occurs in their bundle sheet cells. So this has been shown to you on the previous video that has been presented. And again, it is um, illustrated here in the mesophyll cell, wherein ATP is, and um, the PEP is uh, produced to malate, a four carbon, and then uh, this malate is transported to the bundle sheet cell to produce glucose for the vascular tissue. So simple as that. So those are the C4 plants. Again, these are the grasses, spoon, and sugar cane. So next uh, ad adaptation is for the crassulation acid metabolism plants. So this also are uh, thriving in dry environments. And this constitutes 5% of plants. This include the cactus and ice plants. So in this case, because again, they are, uh, the weather is very hot and dry. So the stomates close during day so they can conserve their water. So stomates will only open during the night. And this, in this uh, no, adaptation, the light reaction occurs during the day. But during the Calvin cycle, this will only occur when carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide is present. So para silang mga, mga uh, dormant and they will only take place the photosynthesis whenever they have available resources. No? So those are the calm plants. So this is what is shown in the in the, uh, no, the illustration here. So during night again, the stomates open. So the, um, the Calvin cycle occur, while the, in, during day, stomates close. So therefore, they're just gonna um, um, fix the, or um, use the, um, the light reaction phase, no, where in glucose, where in they produce glucose, no. So those are these are the for the calm plants. So, um, finally, why do calm plants close their stomata during the day? And I just have mentioned to you, what's the answer? Anyone? So come, yes, Charles. Para di kagawas ang big lang. I, ah, matang. Yes. So they, so that uh, the water loss is minimized, or so that water will not evaporate from the plant system. So come plants close their stomata in the hottest part of the day para makakonserve ng water. So, do you have any questions or clarification regarding photosynthesis?
questions or clarifications before we proceed none. with nine. So before we proceed with our next topic, which is cellular respiration. So I, I, have, I have actually sent you this one, uh, a video about cellular respiration. So let's have a look first before we proceed with the PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so so um, before again we proceed with cellular respiration, um, let me introduce to you its um, its um, definition. So uh, technically, it it is a catabolic exergonic oxygen requiring process. So that means it really requires no. no um, oxygen for it to undergo its process that uses energy extracted from the macromolecules glucose, which are definitely the product of photosynthesis, to produce the ATP or the adenosine triphosphate and water. No, so um, actually um, it has the formula is just opposite of photosynthesis. So if you notice um. Previously, that uh, the the product of photosynthesis when we have um, when uh, when plants take in carbon dioxide and water with the presence of sunlight through the chlorophyll, so the plants will make or produce glucose or as product no, of photosynthesis with the release of an oxygen. But um, the um, the other way around is done with cellular respiration. Because uh, our, the plants, not only the plants, no, because we are talking about cellular respiration. So cellular respiration actually occurs in both plants and animals, not even humans. So we use glide, uh, glucose and also oxygen to produce carbon dioxide, water, at chaka, ATP. And we, we then use ATP as our energy source so we can do all our activities for growth and development and so on. So I have here a, a presentation regarding cellular respiration. This is a very, um, other, uh, another version. It's not so technical, Familiar. but this is- A long day of teaching, this followed is by hours of grading out. Easy to understand, and I hope you will enjoy this one. Are you a morning person? One of us is, and one of us is definitely not. Mainly because when I wake up in the morning, it just takes a while for me to get my energy back. It takes a lot of time and coffee for that to happen for me. Cows really don't have that luxury. They are busy performing cell processes all the time. Active transport of many substances needed for their survival, for example. And the energy currency they need, specifically, is ATP. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. It's a type of nucleic acid, actually, and it is action-packed with three phosphates. We have a video all about ATP and how it works in energy currency. So where am I going with this? Well, cells have to make this ATP. It doesn't really matter what kind of cell you are. Prokaryote or eukaryote have to make ATP. The process for making that ATP is different, however, depending on that type of cell. One way is called aerobic cellular respiration. Lots of organisms can do aerobic cellular respiration, but this video is specifically going to go into aerobic cellular respiration in eukaryotic cells. That means this video is talking about the process within cells that have membrane-bound organelles, such as the nucleus and mitochondria. Eukaryotic cells include the cells we find in functions, fungi, animals, and cats. The mitochondria, which can be found in most eukaryotic cells, are going to be kind of a big deal in this aerobic cellular respiration because some of the processes occur in the mitochondria. So let's get started. Remember, the major goal for any organism performing this is to make ATP. Okay, here's the overall look of the equation for aerobic cellular respiration. Remember that reactants in I'm going to go to the next one. 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 I
But inside our respiration, we're going to lose part of the glucose down to make ATP. Fun fact you know how the green tea burns your way to the ground? It isn't able to go to the end of the cell, and how the germinating green is relying on glucose that has. Transport chain and chaosmosis. This is just a beautiful thing, really. In eukaryotic cells, this is still in the mitochondria, and to be more specific, it's involving the inner mitochondrial membrane. We do require oxygen for this aerobic step. This is a very complex process, and we are greatly simplifying it by saying that electrons are transferred from the NADH and FADH to protein complexes in electron carriers. The electrons are used to generate a Proton gradient as protons are pumped across to the intermembrane space. All these protons being pumped out into this intermembrane space generates an electrical and chemical gradient. The thing is, if you remember from our self transport video, ions like the AD plus don't easily travel across membranes directly without something to travel through. The protons can travel through an amazing enzyme called ATP synthase. If I could be any enzyme, I could be synthase. Because it has the ability to make ADP by adding a phosphate to ADP. ADP is a precursor to ATP. ADP has two phosphates, but if it obtains a third phosphate, it becomes ADP. So in chemiosmosis, the protons travel down their electrochemical gradient through a portion of the ATP synthase, powering it to make ATP. The ultimate goal oxygen is the final acceptor of the electron. When oxygen divides into hydrogen, you get H2O, water. If you remember from our equation, water is a list of products. Now, the electron transport chain in the osmosis step makes a lot more ATP compared to other two previous steps. How much? So I've noticed in my years of teaching and the assortment of textbooks I've collected over the years, there are some different numbers in cellular respiration chain. In fact, you can even see them change a bit in different editions of the same book. And it's made me want to emphasize that it's important to not just memorize numbers because it really is more on the beach. I want to focus back on the number of ATP made for glucose molecule because it depends on a lot of variables. One variable is the gradient we were talking about. How many protons were pumped across the mitochondrial membrane? You can see more variables discussed in the factual reference. And those references have estimates ranging from 26 to 34 molecules of ATP 
for glucose molecule, and the electron transport chain in key osmosis step alone. Then, if you add the other two steps, Krebs, otherwise known as the citric acid cycle, and glycolysis, you could estimate a range of anywhere between 30 to 38 net ATP molecules total per molecule protein. Again, to emphasize the range. Now, this is just one way of creating ATP. But like we had said at the beginning, all cells have to make ATP, but the way they do it is very different. If there's no oxygen available, some cells have the ability to perform a process known as fermentation. It's not as efficient, but it can still make ATP when there is an oxygen. We have a video about that. We can't emphasize enough how important the process of making ATP is for cells. For example, cyanide, which is found in some rat poisons, can block a step in the electron transport chain which would block ATP production. A poison that prevents ATP from being produced can be deadly. With the important role that mitochondria have in ATP production, there is also a demand for increased research on mitochondrial disease. We are confident that the understanding of how to treat these diseases will continue to improve as more people like you ask the question. Well, that's it for the sisters and the United States Radio. <laughs> Okay, so that was really a nice presentation regarding um, respiration. So it's very clear and just very simple, easy to understand. So, for, but um, we will go through um, the the very ano uh, the step by step, no. Okay, so, so again, um, cellular respiration has the three has three main um. I like photosynthesis. No, it has light dependent and light independent. Uh, Again, again, mute sa inyong mga microphone kasi maka ano siya maka low siya sa um, um hmm, sa sound sa sa ano sa ating ano presentation. So but then if you have questions or clarification so you can just um ask anytime. Well, uh, we are having our discussion, and then uh, you just you just um, unmute you, your microphone. So again, as based on what we have seen on the presentation on YouTube, it has um, three main three main um, activities, no processes. So, but then before we proceed with these three main processes, let's um let's try to differentiate respiration from transpiration because we always even me no when i was still in college I, I i was having difficulty i mean i was um i had um sometimes i can um it's interchange uh the word transpiration and cellular respiration but respiration is different from transpiration since transpiration is the evaporation of water in the leaves or plant parts, no? It's not, uh, respiration is other things. So again, when you say res respiration, it is a um, producing ATP out of the glucose or macromolecules, no? So in what kinds of organisms does cellular respiration takes place, no? In the presentation, we have learned that it both, uh, it both, um, um, undergoes on plants and animals. No, we got ten minutes. So whenever we are cut off, no, in, you just go back to the link for for the final, you know, instruction. So again, uh, it both occurs in plants and animals. No, uh, for plants. Which are autotrophs, they are self producer and animals are heterotrophs or consumers. So, which is it's actually the plants who produce their own food and it's the animals who um, take in the food that are made by plants. No? 
So in the mitochondria, I just I just be fast, you know. But then uh, all of the discussion have already uh, presented in the YouTube. So it is uh, located in the organelle, you know, in the mitochondria where cellular cellular respiration takes place. So again, like photosynthesis, it involves redox reaction or transfer of one or more electrons from one reactant to the other. So if you can see here, this is oxidation reaction or the loss of electrons and the gain of oxygen. So it is uh, shown here in glucose oxidized to carbon dioxide with the release of ADP. In the redox reaction, naman, we're in, in the reduction reaction, naman, there's a gain of electrons and the loss of oxygen. So oxygens here gain electron and um, are uh, lost with uh, oxygen so to produce water and ATP. And next, uh, there are four main parts actually in cellular respiration. We have the glycolysis or the splitting of sugar and that is inside in the cytosol outside of mitochondria. And uh, we have the so-called grooming phase or that we migrate from cytosol to matrix and Krebs cycle or citric acid cycle. So you do the presentation from the video, we have Krebs cycle and electron transport chain and glycolysis as the three main events. But in the breakdown of cellular respiration, they are categorized as four, uh, including the grooming phase no? or migration. So the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle uh, um, occurs in the mitochondrial matrix, while the ETC or oxidative phosphorylation also called as chemiosmosis. So we have learned also what is chemiosmosis on photosynthesis, and this is uh, done in the inner mitochondrial membrane. So what is glycolysis again? So it's in the cytosol, remember, outside of the mitochondria, and it has actually a total of 10 steps. First is the energy investment phase with five steps and the energy yielding phase or energy payoff phase with five steps again. So what are these five steps? No? Uh, you can see in the energy investment phase, there is two ATP produced from glucose to glyceraldehyde phosphate. While in the energy yielding phase from glyceraldehyde phosphate or GAP, there is four ATP produced to produce pyruvate. No? And uh, the, therefore, the total net yield is 2 pyruvate, 2 ADP, and 2 NADH. And during the substrate level phosphorylation, ATP is also formed with an enzyme. The enzyme is actually the one which transfers the phosphate from a substrate to ADP, as shown here on this figure. No? So ADP to ADP, the product of pyruvate. So what happens without oxygen? Now, that is now called as the anaerobic. Since we know that uh, respiration occurs with the, with the requiring oxygen. So aerob aerobic respiration, talaga siya. But res when respiration without air, uh, I mean oxygen, that becomes anaerobic respiration and is otherwise called as fermentation. And we are very familiar with fermentation since we have give a lot of products of fermentation. We have wine, we have cheese, we have um, yogurt, you know, no? and this occurs in the cytosol. No, when there's zero oxygen and glycolysis is still part of the fermentation. So it starts with the glycolysis and um, there are two types of anaerobic respiration fermentation. We have the alcohol and lactic acid fermentation. Alcohol occurs in plants and lactic acid fermentation occurs in and animals, and even for humans, no? In the video you had, um, it was uh, explained that when our mass, when we use our muscle, we do exercise, we do walking, and then pag maulan ganit ka, that is now the effect of an aerobic fermentation. Mahugdan tag oxygen, o nang mapamaulan ato ang mga muscles, no? So that's the result of an aerobic respiration or fermentation. But, um, the other uh, good thing about alcohol fer fermentation is that um, we can produce beer and wine, no? which is our favorite. So from glucose without the presence of oxygen, there is uh, you can produce two ethanol actually, no? using plants and fungi. And for the lactic acid fermentation, this happens in animals. So even in humans, we have pain in muscle after a workout, and that is 
because of lactic acid fermentation wherein glucose is when we use glucose as an ATP without oxygen, so we produce two lactic acid. No? So in the end product, so this is the end product of the alcohol fermentation, no? two ATP, two carbon dioxide, and two ethanol. But the end product for lactic acid fermentation is two ATP and two lactic acids. So in the grooming phase, so we got this for glycolysis, no? in the grooming phase now, this this occur with the presence now with oxygen, the aerobic. So, yung end product na pa, pa, uh, to pyruvate from the glycolysis are already transported into the mitochondria membranes from the cytosol. Since cytosol occur, I mean glycolysis occurs in the cytosol. So, in the matrix, yung 2 acetyl coenzyme is converted na. No? Ang pyruvate is converted to 2 acetate coenzyme in the mitochondrial matrix. So, ang end product during the grooming phase is 2 NADH, 2 carbon dioxide, and 2 acetyl coenzyme A. Now, the third phase uh, is Krebs cycle or citric acid cycle, and it's again um, done in the mitochondrial matrix. So, yung acetyl coenzyme A, which is the end product of the grooming phase, bonds to oxaloacetic acid to make citrate now. And then it takes two turns actually to oxidize one glucose inside the mitochondrial matrix. So this is what happens no? from acetate coenzyme A, one turn, they produce ATP, ADP, no? and it produces the citrate. And another one produces citrate. So the total net yield for two turns of Krebs cycle is 2 ATP, 6 NADPH, ah, NADH, 2 FADH, and 4 carbon dioxide. And the last phase, which is the electron transport chain, ATC, or chemical osmosis oxidative phosphorylation, which is still inside the mitochondrial membrane. So uh, this uses the ETC cytochrome proteins and ATP synthase enzyme to make ATP at this time. And as you have seen in the video, it pumps hydrogen protons across endomeres inner inner membrane and lowers the pH to uh, to undergo the process. No, where in hydrogen ions move by diffusion or proton motive force to the ATP synthase para produce ng ATP. So may ang lahat ng NADH, FADH are converted to ATP called cellular respiration and converts 3 ATP and 2 ATP. So as you can see, this still is this is done in this inner membrane space, and this is what happened. This is already um explained in the video on the proton pumping you know, in the inner mitochondrial membrane. So um the total yield actually is thirty eight ATP, you no, know? but um yeah, total yield is thirty eight ATP. But for eukaryotes, yung mga um, organism which has which has uh, membranes, no, are only thirty six. But for um yeah, and it's shown here on this figure the total of ATP. No? And for prokaryotes, yung walang mga membrane is uh, more, which is thirty eight. No, and it is shown here again kung saan sila nagka. Uh, ang difference nila actually is dito sa second phase. At like all this, six ang prokaryotes but the eukaryotes only four. No? So, what other food molecules can be used in during cellular respiration? So, aside from carbohydrates, we can also use polysaccharides, no? fats and proteins. That's why kung uh, mamayat mo ka, walay kaon, pag ma-exhaust na ang carbohydrates in the body, they're going to use next the fats. So that's why my exhaust na ang fat sa body mo and then mawala na ang muscles mo because they're gonna use the proteins or amino acids. So 